Thank you, Speaker. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this important motion that would allocate more time for debate, improve the prominence of private members' business, and create provisions for debates on issues of significant provincial importance. As a longtime resident of Burlington, I ran first uh, public office in 2010. I ran for the municipal councillor in Ward 1 because I was like Lady Monroe and didn't want to keep sitting around talking about it. I wanted to uh, jump in and see what happened. I did lose, but the great thing about that was it was so interesting to get out, talk to the people in your riding, to see what was important to them. And I always think, you know, I always say to my kids, the difference between winning and losing is that, you know, a loser never goes out and tries. So you're a winner right out the gate by, you know, lots of us have done it in here as well. So I was fortunate. I, I ran in 2011 for here, loved every second of it. And then in the sweep, I got out in 2014. I was fortunate in 2018 to be one of the only two of the MPPs successfully to come back to this beautiful house here, Speaker. In the 2018 election, I received over 25,500 votes in my riding of Burlington, nearly 10,000 more votes than the Liberal incumbent. I mention this because my role as an MPP is to serve the people of Burlington regardless of who they vote for. And let me tell you, Speaker, I have always recognized the incredible opportunity we all have in this place to make a difference. Today, we're debating the government House Leader's motion to make changes to the standing orders of the Legislative Assembly. For those watching these proceedings on TV or online, standing orders are the rules that govern debate, the passage of bills, and the consideration of important issues of the day. I support the proposed changes to the standing orders because they will provide all 124 members a better opportunity to participate and involve themselves in legislative business. The COVID-19 global pandemic has reinforced the importance of having strong and efficient democratic institutions. From the very beginning, the Ontario government acted quickly to ensure that our legislature was able to continue to fun function in unprecedented times. While some governments ended regular sittings, members of this legislature met for 30 days during the height of COVID-19. Throughout the pandemic, Premier Ford and House Leader Calandra recognized the importance for opposition parties to be able to hold the government to account. Not opposing for the sake of opposing, but working together to pass legislation and implement programs to help Ontarians right across the province affected by COVID-19. As we return to our regular fall session, the government house leader has proposed a number of permanent and provisional amendments to the rules of the legislature. Speaker, the wonderful member from Markham Stouffville has demonstrated his commitment to enhancing the ability of all members of this legislature to represent their constituents. He began last summer by engaging in a study of the standing orders. He took the time to do it the right way. As always, his approach to modernize the rules of this leg legislature was collaborative and inclusive. He consulted with the official opposition, independent Green, and Liberal members to make sure the changes proposed last December were fair and genuinely improve the way this place works. As a matter of fact, Speaker, Many of those changes that were debated before Christmas originated with the independent members in this place and were supported by the independent Liberal members and the leader of the Green Party. Those changes included enhancing the focus on member statements, which are now delivered just before question period, enhancing questions and answer during debate, enhanced co-sponsor of private members' bills, and allowing accommodations for members with temporary or permanent disabilities. Speaker, for the benefit of those watching at home, I also want to take pri talk private members' business and their importance to this legislative process. A private member's bill in our parliamentary system allows any MPP who is not a minister to the, of the Crown to directly propose legislation. 
We go out into our communities, we speak to our constituents and stakeholders, and we develop and introduce legislation. This is a very important part of legislate, legislative procedure. Under the old standing orders, two members from the same party could not co-sponsor a bill, and there was a limit of three co-sponsors for any PMB. I remember back in 2012 when I introduced my very first private member's bill, the in Inherited Heart Rhythm Disorder Awareness Act. It was co-sponsored by the NDP member from Hamilton Mountain and the former Liberal member from Oakville. The rules back then, as they were last year at this time, didn't allow anyone else. I always thought the rule was strange. That's why I was pleased to speak in favour of changing it on December 2, 2019. Thanks to this change, standing orders now allow co-sponsors of PMBs by any form members, regardless of their party affiliation. This allows a PC, NDP, Liberal and Green MPP to come together to sponsor a bill in a show of cross-partisan support. This was a very welcoming change. When the Legislature suspended regular meetings at the onset of COVID-19 in March, 27 private members' bills were scheduled to be debated before the House rose for the summer. Premier Ford and our government House Leader are committed to ensuring these private members' bills will be able to be brought forward. That's why we're proposing updates to these standing orders to allow us to effectively catch up by next summer. To do this, the government is proposing the following measures. First and foremost, we are enhancing the focus on private members' bills by considering one item per day on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Second, to catch up from delays caused by COVID-19, we propose temporarily adding conditions of a fourth private members' bill each week on Monday at 9 a.m. until June 2021. Third, the government House Leader is proposing requiring all record recorded divisions of PMBs to be deferred to the following day after question periods so more members can have the opportunity to vote. Members on both sides of this House work hard to develop private members' legislation. The changes being proposed today will ensure that 27 bills, bills not brought forward due to COVID-19 will be introduced. Speaker, prior to the changes passed last December's debate on a bill was done in rotation. A member from one side had the opportunity to speak to an item of business for 10 minutes. Eight minutes were then allotted to four members to pose a question or make a comment, not exceeding two minutes each. The original speaker was then given two minutes to, re to reply. The old debate format was very constrained. It gave members an opportunity to voice their opinions, but it was rare to see genuine questions get asked and answered. Under the new debate format, after a member completes their 10-minute speech, other members are given 10 minutes to ask questions. Questions, of course, are limited to one minute, and the member who originally spoke now immediately gets one minute to reply. Mr. Speaker, I move this question now be put.